Hi, it's been a while since we spoke. I've had a few distractions, but uh, just this week, I've been totally killing it with app development. Um, the prototyping stuff, not so much. Um, I think maybe um, it just doesn't seem to be the way that I work. Um, my plan was to you know, build something that was completely bare bones that I could just get out really quick and give all of us something to play with. But I think I need to make more of the internals. I don't think it's enough just to make something dumb because it doesn't, I, I, I did sort of put together something that was quite simple, but I didn't give any decent feel of the app at all. So I'm kind of changing my plans a bit here. Um, as, as my partner, Catherine put it, it's sort of something that I felt like I should do, but it's just not the way that I work. So <laughs> I'm actually building the app for reals. Um, so I've been doing a bit of work on the internal stuff, thinking about how to store the data for these new projects. So just for comparison, Loopy as it is right now is quite simple the way that the projects are structured because there are only really, um, there's one piece of audio for each track and that's it. So if you've got 12 tracks, so 12 pieces of audio, 12 audio files, and when you overdub on one, it just overwrites that audio file with the overdubbed audio. So there's not much to manage and Consequently, the project files are quite simple. It's just a bunch of those audio files plus a really basic XML file, which is just a text-based, um, really simple flat data file that contains the, the tempo and stuff like that. So really not very complicated. Now, Masterpiece, on the other hand, is gonna be a lot more complicated because pretty much everything's non-destructive, which means if you do an overdub, it's actually going to save the new audio as a separate audio file, which means it needs to be able to manage that, needs to know which layer is what. And then that's just the uh, one part of it. There's um, each track is going to have clips. Each clip is going to have layers, which are the overdubs, for example. And each layer is going to have sub layers or uh, segments is what I'm calling them, which is all the little pieces of audio that you can actually jostle around for each layer so that you can you know, split things up, move things around, um, do all of that manipulation. So that's a lot more than I can manage with just an XML file for storing each of these projects. It's too much. So I've had to think about the way to manage this and I think the answer is to use core data. Now core data is kind of a, a cornerstone of iOS development. It's used for a whole bunch of apps because it so conveniently manages data. So what it is, it's a system that Apple have developed that sits on top of a database system called SQLite or SQLite. A database is different from a, a text file like XML or something because it's more structured and there's a layer between you and the data file that manages everything for you. So whereas with XML, you have to actually, you know, have a whole list of all of your different data types like you know you might have the tempo and the name of the session and you might have a list of the tracks and for each track you might have you know the where it starts how long it is that sort of thing rather than having to manage all that yourself with a database you can just identify classes of objects like a track and you can just pull out one at a time and do stuff with it and then put it back so it makes it a lot easier for developers to handle but it also means much less memory pressure on the device because you don't have to load the whole file all at once. You can just grab bits of it. And that's what I need for Masterpiece because otherwise I think these devices are going to not be able to handle the memory requirements and my brain isn't going to be able to handle dealing with all that data. So I've been mapping out uh, all of the kind of main objects that make up a session and that's what you're seeing here. So this is the, uh, the core data object design. So you'll see we've got a track here and that has a bunch of attributes like the color and where it is on the screen and whether it's looping and what its volume is, that sort of thing. And tracks can have clips. Now clips, those are all of the, the different uh, separate pieces of audio that the track has. And the clip can have you know, automation so you can control the volume over time, that sort of thing. And then clips can have layers. Now layers are your overdubs, for example. And Layers can be on or off, so you can kind of select which layers you want to be able to hear. And finally, layers have segments, which actually contain the units of data. Uh, for example, an audio segment, which will contain recorded audio. 
or a MIDI segment could contain some MIDI. There might be other kinds later on too. So that's the idea and I've actually put this into play and um, this looks a lot like it did uh, when I last talked to you, of course, but these are actually real track objects now, um, all part of a real session. And I've added one thing, which is uh, the transition between tracks and the, or rather between the session screen and the track screen. So you'll see it now zooms nicely. And a really nice feature is you can pinch from any one of these up to the thing, and then you can pinch back. So it's quite a nice way to get to the configuration for each track without having to hold your finger and then wait for the delay. That, that isn't really, um, the actual data modeling stuff. That's just a bit of fun that I've had along the way. So with all of this, I've been thinking about um, what the actual project files should look like. Now Loopy right now, it's just a folder. And in that, in that folder is a media folder with all the files, all the, the audio files, and this XML file. Now, I think Loopy masterpiece project files are gonna be, again, a folder. And within that is going to be the database file. And then there's going to be um, another, probably a media folder still, which is just going to have a whole bunch of audio files, probably with an internal code, just named with maybe just a sequence of unique letters and numbers. And they're going to be tied into the database. So the database is actually going to tie which audio file is corresponding to which uh, you know, segment layer, whatever. Um, and then when you export, this is actually something I want to ask you. When you export from Loopy, it will pull out the audio files that actually correspond to that state of the, the session that you're exporting. So I would like to know from you, what would you like to export to? I think probably Ableton is a really good candidate for that. But where else? Do you want to be able to export to, I don't know, Aurea? What kind of data files are we talking about? It'd be good to know now so that I can actually kind of plan for that and make sure that I've got all of the things in order to be able to do that. And look, while I'm asking you about exporting, where would you like to import from? Um, kind of the same question, really. All right, well, I'm actually going on holiday for a month. We're heading up to Europe, uh, partly to visit Sebastian, partly to have a bit of a break. So it's going to be a bit of a delay again, I'm afraid, but I intend to keep on working on Masterpiece, you know, on the plane and in idle moments. So yeah, hopefully I'll have some progress next time I speak to you. Anyway, have a good month. Speak to you later. Bye.